the greater good. Oh, special delivery. Wonder what it is. It's the Osprey E300 from Osprey Electronics. Yeah, I've been wanting one of these forever. Honey, did you buy another miner? I thought you said we were running out of dry powder. No, now I'm doing crypto stuff. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. I was excited that I got a chance to meet the Osprey Electronics team this year at Mining Disrupt. I just knew that right away we clicked and I've been wanting one of these Osprey E300s for a very long time. So I am very excited that I finally got the opportunity to receive one of these and test it out. I am going to unbox this thing. I'm gonna show you guys how to set it up and we will talk about why I prefer this over the methods that I've used in the past. I am getting really sick of having to rebuild my TH-53 six card mining rig, uh, the FPGA rig that I built and having to switch from dev boards, some other boards and get JTAG licenses and find bit streams. And you know, it's like, I'm not that great with coding. So if you guys know the frustration of trying to deal with changing algorithms quickly on FPGA algorithms, then you know why I like this thing, but we'll go ahead and get into it a little bit more. We'll unbox it and we'll take a look at it. Let's go. I am excited to try out the Osprey E300. I got into FPGA mining back in early 2023. It was January 2023 when I built my own FPGA rig and it's just tedious trying to switch algorithms. And you guys, if you've been mining for a while, you know how it goes. Basically, by the time I was able to like switch algorithms, there would be some new news for the algorithm that I finally just switched to. Um, I was able to mine Ironfish for a pretty good long time, but then Ironfish switched to FPGA and ASIC resistant algorithm. So I was going to switch to Alethium. I got all the work done to switch to ELF and I had to like basically rebuild my my rig i had to use a motherboard instead of like a dev board i had to upload ubuntu go into certain discords to buy the jtag licenses for each of my th53 fpga cards then i had to get the bitstream for lithium get it all working mess with the overclocks by the time i got it all done the entity came online so i kind of have gotten to the point where i'm just kind of over it with that rig what I love about the Osprey E300 is the web GUI and the fact that it's such a small, very compact, cool little machine. Um, I will show this side by side on the screen right now to show you how, how different it is compared to my other rig. My other rig looks like just an open air GPU rig and it takes up a lot of room. It's a lot of wattage. I like how this is just a nice slim form factor. Now, I am also pretty excited that Osprey provided me with Noctua fans and stock fans so I can test a little bit before and after with my decibel meter to see how quiet these Noctua fans are, see how the cooling goes with them. We'll just faffle a little bit with this thing. I'm gonna power it with a RM1000X Corsair power supply. I'll leave a link for the power supply in the description of the video. It's an Amazon affiliate link, so if you use it, it helps the channel out if you appreciate the content. So that's what I'm gonna use because 1000 watts is a pretty good wiggle room for this thing. I like that thing, it's been very reliable. I've had it for like, I think about two years now almost. It has been a solid, solid power supply. And then they are a little more expensive, but um, I've burnt out other power supplies that were cheaper. So I really do like the Corsair. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing fired up we will log into it. I'll show you how to get into it in the web GUI and all that, and then we will start faffling. All right, so let's get all the connections done. But before we do that, I wanted to do a, another giveaway. So I wanna say thank you to the meter box for giving me another mystery meter box set to give away in this video. So I need you to do a few things. Just hit the like button right now subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed and then put hashtag meter box in the comment and make a nice comment on the video and this will be for USA only please and I will pick a winner about a week from now to give away a mystery box set from the meter box so thank you to the meter box we'll go ahead and plug in all the connections from the power supply and we will log into the web GUI and we'll get this thing fired up Okay, so if you've been looking to buy one of these, I'm assuming that you've cruised around on the Osprey Electronics website, but if you're not sure how to log into your machine, it's really easy. You just go and punch your IP address of the machine into your web browser, similar to other ASICs, and then the web GUI login will 
pop up. So if you're not sure how to do that, you can use a tool like Advanced IP Scanner. Uh, you could, uh, if you have like a, I have an app where I can just log into my router uh, from my phone and I found the IP address for the device arm and I just punch that IP address into my Chrome browser and boom, here is the interface, like the uh, login for the interface. So it's um, root and then password is password and then we will log right into it. Okay, it always warns you to, you know, change your password and things like that. So here is the Osprey Electronics Web GUI. Okay, so I punched in some overclocks. I'll show you guys how it's really easy. And you can change the voltages very easily, as you can see as well. So we're on the first you know, page of their web GUI, and you're seeing the three cards, zero, one, and two. And zero is, it looks like from what I've seen and understand, this card is slightly different from the others as far as like the heat sink goes, and it's closer to the wall of the device itself. So. It seems like um, so far from me overclocking and messing around with it, the card zero, the temperature is a little bit higher than the other two. So just be aware of that, that your limitation might be this card right here. You don't wanna push these too hard to where the, um, you know, the cards overheat. So the fans are on auto for me right now, the Noctua fans, um, but they are at 100%. So if you hear them in the background, like this thing is one foot away from me right now. So hopefully it's not too annoying, but um, I have the machine right next to me and the fans are at 100%, so those are the Noctua fans. Um, so you can change your voltage settings right here, and conveniently, it's very easy to find the overclocks for the algorithms that they have. On the website, they have um, like overclocks for you know whatever algorithms, like the lithium and things like that, so I'll click into it, see how I'm in the description of the E300, and you can like, you know, when you're shopping for it, you're in the store, you go to this website, uh, the Osprey Electronics website, they'll have the overclocks um, in the store section. So here's the description of the E300. And then you click on algorithms and I'll scroll down slowly so you can see them all. There's in Radiant, Etica, Elysium, Ram, Chapa. So those are the ones that they show on the website for now, but they're always coming out with new algorithms. So I would encourage you to join their Discord and follow them on Twitter. And I will leave links for those things in the description of the video so you can kind of stay up to date on what is going on with Osprey. So let's go ahead and like punch in some of these overclocks. Sorry to interrupt your video, but a quick word from the sponsor of the video, Crypto Miner Bros. Crypto Miner Bros is a trusted website that I buy ASIC miners from. They have all in shipped prices listed on their website so you won't get slapped with unexpected fees and import duties and extra shipping costs, the price that you see on the screen is the price that you pay. So check out Crypto Miner Bros and use my exclusive discount code for $70 off. Thanks for listening. Now back to your video. Right now, the overclocks that I have set are medium overclocks. I believe I punched in um, 700 millivolts and 774 clocks. So let's take a look at 700 millivolts. And then let's go to where um, settings are for the overclock. So this is the minor configuration section and they tell you what the dev fees are and I believe they change. So keep an eye on this and keep an eye on the um, website to see what the dev fees are. I have my uh, uh, firmware set to update automatically. I'll click here for just one second. And um, I have it to set to auto update because I do believe sometimes the dev fees will drop. And if you don't update, you'll be paying the higher um, dev fee sometimes. So um, I can't remember, but I believe one of them dropped from like 15% dev fee down to 10% dev fee. So if you didn't update the firmware, I don't know if it took effect. So just be aware, um, you might want to check for updates if you left it in manual mode, um, check occasionally, but I've got mine in update automatically mode. So let's go back to the miner. So the de uh, developer for what I've got loaded up right now is the Alephium Bitstream. The reason why I use the Alephium Bitstream is because I'm more familiar with that um, algorithm on FPGAs because I just built that FPGA rig that I was telling you about earlier, the TH53 rig for Alephium. So I wanted to run this with Alephium for a little while while I did this video because I'm more familiar with the hash rate and the power consumption that uh, the TH53 cards that I had was on Alephium. So that's why I decided to go with that. But you might want to take a look and see what's most profitable when you get your machine. Uh, right now, I believe Gram is probably the most profitable. Um, I just don't have a wallet set up for it and I haven't mined it on another algorithm. So I wanted to do like an apples to apples comparison with my other rig. So um, so I've got Whitefire as a developer. Um, 
configuration uh, manual, or, or sorry, command line you can use, or I've got it in menu mode. Um, auto start, I have enabled, and the algorithm is lithium. So here's where you can change your algorithm. This is what I was telling you guys about earlier. It's so easy with the Osprey E300 to change your algorithm. That's what I really love about this thing. So instead of, like I said before, like going having to like get JTAG licenses for your cards, once you get that, then you can try to go find a Bitstream and a Discord somewhere. And it's like, I just don't feel like trying to do that every time a new algorithm comes out. And it's, you know, it's just so much easier this way. So when I start researching a little bit more into Gram and I feel comfortable, like I got my wallet set up and I want to mine Gram, all I have to do is click the mine Gram, punch in whatever pool you want to use, and then punch in the wallet, check for the overclocks that will work for your machine on Osprey's website and in their Discord and things like that. And then you punch in the overclocks and then you maybe punch in the recommended voltages that they have on the website too. And then you hit start mining and you're off. So right now, if I click this, this, this would stop me from mining because I'm currently mining with lithium. but this is where the start button is. So that's it, it's as simple as that. Like I said, pick your algorithm, Punch in your pool, punch in your wallet, and then put your overclocks to what you want them to be on each card. Like I said, I'd recommend maybe going with a milder overclock on board zero because there isn't quite as good a cooling on that board. Just be mindful of that. And then you would go up here, make sure you got your voltages punched in the way the, um, the suggested overclocks are. And then you will, you know, of course, want to tweak them on your own for efficiency and you want to watch your temperatures and things like that for your own environment. So don't just blindly punch in those overclocks and say, set it and forget it. You really should be watching your machine and adjusting your overclocks and your voltages based on how your machine reacts. You might start getting like a lot of um, like rejected chairs and things like that. Um, if that starts happening, you can watch for rejected chairs in the minor log. So you can see if you're getting hard, like a lot of hardware errors, and things like that. I'm getting very minimal, negligible hardware errors on mine. I'm getting accepted chairs. See how it says, yay, accepted. So I'm not getting like a ton of rejected chairs and I'm not getting a lot of hardware errors. So this minor log is very useful for this machine too. It's very easy to click back and forth through all these uh, screens, as you can see. So I really love how versatile this machine is. And I love how you can just very easily with a few clicks change algorithms. You know, you might have an algorithm that is no longer mineable, you can just switch to the next thing. The other thing that you eventually might need is this right here. For now, most of the algorithms that we're looking at do not require you to punch anything in here. This VCC HBM, this is for algorithms that require memory adjustment. So for now, nothing needs to be done with this. Um, I've already punched in voltages for my overclocks the way they're set. And uh, so I don't need to like punch anything in here. So. Anyway, this is how easy it is. I wanted to show you guys. So I will continue to do future videos on this Osprey E300. Another thing I like about Osprey is that they allow you to kind of build from a base, if you know what I mean. Like you don't have to spring for the E300 VU35P, which is what I am showing in this video. It's got like uh, cards that are equivalent to like TH55 FPGAs, if I understand correctly. Um, and it has three of them and it has the Noctua fans. If you wanted to start with something on the like a little bit lower end to get into it and see how it goes and then build up, you can buy an E100 with one FPGA. Uh, this is a VU33, which is similar to a single TH53 card like the rig I showed you earlier has six TH53s on it. This is like a single TH53 rig, but it's called a VU33P. So the E100 has a single VU33P and then you could add on if you wanted to. Um, they do offer some other things uh, for sale as well, like control boards. And then you can also do a reball if you have old FPGAs that you want fixed up. So check out their website and check this out if you have old FPGAs that need to be reballed. And then um, they can kind of make it into a form factor that will fit into an E300 shell. So like they even sell the shell and control board um, on its own without the mining boards if you want to build your own rig with reballed um, old FPGA. So it's very cool what they've got going on. So um, I do have discount codes for this and there's like a tier system. So I will put the discount codes for each machine in the description of the video. But for just for an example, um, the machine that I show you in this video, the E300, I punched in my discount code and it saved $125. So 
that is a significant saving. So um, if the video is helpful, please consider using the discount code. It is an affiliate code with Osprey Electronics. So the other thing that people would probably ask about is, you know, what is mineable right now and how profitable it is, but it changes so quickly in crypto. So I would encourage you to do some research on projects that you're interested in mining. In in future video, I will try to mine Gram because right now, Alephium, Radiant, um, these uh, algorithms have been taken over by a very large entity that is mining with a lot of hash rates. So it's difficult to mine a lot of Alephium and Radiant with FPGAs at this moment. Now, that can change with different algorithms that come out. So this is why I'm excited about having a very flexible, very easy to switch algorithm machine like the Osprey E300 because I want to be able to roll with the punches in crypto. And right now, from what I understand, Graham is the most profitable. So like I said, I'll be probably doing other videos in the future on the Osprey E300 where I show you about Graham, like how profitable it is, what the overclocks would be for Graham and how much power we're using, things like that. So I will get uh, a little bit deeper into this machine and show you guys what I'm doing with it as time goes on. So I'm pretty excited to work with these. So I want to thank Osprey for providing me this unit to test out and do some videos on. I really appreciate the opportunity. I am very excited about this, like I said, because I've been wanting one of these for a while. And I am very excited for like the future with this. I want to be able to switch algorithms quickly, like I said in the video, and this machine will allow me to do that. So when a new coin comes out that I am very interested in mining, I know I don't have to go through all kinds of stress and struggle to switch algorithms to that new coin. I can just point and shoot once the algorithm drops and the bitstream is available on Osprey's website, and then I'm done and I'm excited because I'm actually mining what I want to mine as quickly as possible. So anyway, thanks again to Osprey Electronics. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Hitting the like button helps more than you can even realize. I've got tons of great crypto content that I'm hoping you will enjoy. Check some of these other videos out. And last but not least, don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good. The greater good.